All right, welcome back, Warriors Fano, to another episode of One Take, the official podcast of the One New Zealand Warriors. Shout out to our sponsor, TAB, newly jumped on and really appreciate their support. But we've got a bit of a regular. He's become a regular anyway. <laughs> Ex-Warrior, club legend, Sky Sport commentator, bit of a voice of the Warriors, Monty Beetham, mate. How are you? An unreal weekend, big win. Life must be good. Benny, it's great. You know, when it's on a Friday night, which is happening this week against the Raiders, and the boys get a win or have a result that you're proud of, it just makes your whole weekend. Um, but it was Sunday. You yeah. had to wait all weekend for that effort, but, man, it was worth the wait because it was something to behold, man. Absolutely. A huge win against the Sharks, 44-12. to 12. I think 25,000 showed up in the end, so a good crowd. Sunday Arvo at Mount Smart, you can't beat it. And for me, the stage was set just on that walkout, all the milestone boys with their family. Did you know then we were in for a pretty special day? Well, I saw Sean coming out with um, MJ, and I thought, okay, this is nice. And then I didn't yeah. realise, because I wasn't sure what was happening, uh, that the other boys were following with their family. And mm-hmm. then I made mention on the broadcast that this is what it's all about. You know, this this club is a family club. Uh, Webby is, is is making sure that it is that, a family way and also making sure it's a bit of a, pretty much a fortress at Go Media Stadium, Mount Smart, and it has been that way, both things. Um, you look in the team room, uh, there's a lot of uh, kids before and after, even after the games, whether you're celebrating – the wins or your, you know, lamenting the losses, mm. uh, the family is all there front and and and, and present. So it was great to see Shawnee and, and all the the boys walk up their kids. Although Wade didn't have any, yeah, but still what a milestone he's been exceptional. Oh, man. absolutely, and his form's crazy. We'll touch on that soon, but it was a big win for the boys. What were your kind of key takeaways? Because I feel like that was a really polished performance. Very polished, because um, you know on the broadcast again you had uh, Fitzgibbon, Craig Fitzgibbon say it was etched in their mind what happened last time at home, yeah. uh, their place. They got embarrassed at home, you know, to to come back from twenty points down or up um, to to win that game or lose that game. If mm. you're a shark supporter, it hurts. And um, he was making mention of that coming into it. So my motivation was there, and throughout that whole match, and particularly to start that match, man, they came out firing. Toby Rudolph was was huge. Yeah, he, he, he was you know setting the tone. He was. Put, laying the smack down and really throughout the whole game, even Nicka Hines, they were really playing their part to try and get the win because I, I think they were tested. Uh, I think Fitzgibbon was saying you need to win this game to mm-hmm. prove that you are a top four team and to revenge the loss at home. Um, but, you know, it wasn't to be. The, the, the boys weathered the storm early and, man, uh, as you mentioned, probably their most complete performance, I think, and it's some, one thing that uh, we really enjoyed watching. What do you like seeing from our attack at the moment? Because I feel like at the start of the year, we were winning some pretty tight games and a lot of focus was on our goal line D. But over the last few weeks, I think out of five of the last six games now, we've scored over 30 points. It looks like our shape, our layering, it's all really coming together pretty nicely. I think it's confidence, confidence in the boys, knowing that it's not just one key player maker that's going to make the difference. Over the years, it's always been one point of attack, which is Sean Johnson. Mm. And if you know that there's one point of attack, it's easier to, to zero in and... and and, and put your extra number there, so to speak. But, you know, with uh, Wade Egan, who we've mentioned, who's the threat straight over with the ball in hand from dummy half, whether it's a, a long pass to to make sure that defenders have to get across and cover the gap so Sean's got a bit more room to play. Or it's the likes of Adam and, and the mm-hmm. guys in the middle of the park uh, that are real run threats with the ball first and foremost, but also the passing threats. I think the majority of our points are scored through the middle of the field. So if you think that there's threat through the, the middle of the field, the defence has to go to that area. And when they go to that area, it makes it a little bit easier out wide for the likes of Dallin, for the likes of, you know, Marcelo Montoya yeah. and Rocco Berry in the weekend, who yeah. I've been waiting for a long time for this specimen to stand up and, and, and take his place and, and let, let it be known that he is a force to be reckoned with in this game. And that's exactly what he's been doing of late, man. 100%. I wanted to touch on the first two tries in particular, because you mentioned uh, a lot of our attack comes from the middle. And I thought it was kind of some masterclass there. I think it was Dallin and Rocco, the first two tries, and it was the exact same shape. We set up in the middle of the field. We had a prop running down off Wade, out the back to SJ, mm-hmm. centre mm-hmm. promoted, second row off his shoulder. First time, needle ball through to Chance and then to Dallin, and then the second time he hit Rocco. Yeah. Like That's obviously straight off the training paddock. How satisfying as a player is it to see those kind of moves show up? come off, and then both variations back-to-back. Back. Well, if you're defensively shaping up against that or, or running against that, it's, it's, it's hard to combat because mm. straight away you've got a long pass from dummy half from Wade Egan, which means you've got to spread a little bit more. And in the middle of the park, when you've got numbers in front of you and everyone's a real threat, uh, the ball carrier uh, first instance and then the short ball, you know, we're seeing the Warriors play on inside shoulders and being very direct. And if they don't get joy in breaking that line, it's quick play of the ball and they go again the same way on the shot shot. So um, it, it is really a sight to behold because 
Shape is one thing, but when everyone's an actual force and no one's running a decoy, everyone yeah. is a real threat of getting that ball, uh, and there's so much run threat within that, it, it, it's, it's crazy. And then how far Sean goes deep into the line, mm. uh, which means the people a little bit wider, they, they obstructed their view of, of where the ball is coming, or it's a little bit delayed in, in, in when it comes out. And, and SJ, um, how deep he's going to the line, isolating defenders, and really just on the money in terms of his choice of pass selection. Mm. I think that, that short ball to Rocket Berry, which was a, 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 a short face ball even, yeah. um, it was just pinpoint, mate. You know, And it's really hard uh, for the retreating defence or the defence who's tired after a lot of uh, play through that middle period uh, to make good decisions. And even if you do, if it's one-on-one, you back yourself every time because yeah. you, your player's bigger and stronger. We mentioned a few names there. One to seventeen, you could probably run through the team sheet and give everyone a wrap. But in terms of some standouts for you, who really caught your eye? Look, Sean's been amazing. Yeah. Uh, I'm so glad he's resigned for another year. Um, and his legacy when he leaves now after next year, if he continues what he's doing now, is going to be where it should have been the mm. whole time. Uh, up there with Stacey Jones, uh, an absolute brilliant player, exactly what we need. I think it's a travesty. I was talking to Nat Harris the other day, Tohu's wife, and she said last year. Tohu was ready to give the game up. Wow. And I know EJ was in some very, very dark places For and sure. he wanted to yeah. go and didn't want to play at all. Mm. And to think that those two have been two of our best performers and key performers in the side and hearts of the, the side off the field, uh, it's crazy to think that they weren't almost in these colours again. Uh, so to see them out there smiling, having fun, um, leading the team out with um, MJ yeah. um, and all being about family – is great, and you know, big big shout out to Keller and uh, and that for making sure that baby was on time. Yeah, um, Sachi. So um, what a way, what a week for SJ. Uh, but you know, Mitch Barnett for me, yeah. unsung hero. Yeah, I mean, he scored sure. two tries last week, but I really do think he picks some moments when the game's in the balance or when he needs to shift that momentum, and he comes up with that big shot. There was a shot on Talakai yeah. uh, which just stopped him in his tracks, or he comes out with that big run, that play you need. You know, because there's often times. And early on in that game, we were losing the momentum in the in the play of the ball and in the ruck and the ruck speed, and really was making it hard. But he's been coming in, and the odd tackle that he comes in and makes it does win that set, or it does get you back to neutral in a position where you can try and win the next tackle, or you can put a bit of kick pressure on, which just forces it um, on on people like Nico Hines. Yeah. So he's he's been inspirational, mate. He's been good, but across the board, a number of key key players. You know, Adam Fenua Blake. <sighs> Oh, you know, a brilliant try, but trying yeah. to mark up on him in the oh. middle, that late feet, uh, yeah. the, the threat of a pass, and just the, you know, the post um, contact meters, un- and that unreal. shot he put on on defense to oh. rock someone. I can't remember who I love it was, it. but I love it. yeah, yep. stuff running at. Well, SJ put a shot on as well early on. Right, SJ defensively has been great. He's been good. It's a throwback to yesteryear when he used to put a couple of shots on. Yeah, uh, but not just that. It's just the will to go after players. Mm. Very much like Mitch Barnett, uh, he goes after players. He wants to compete. He wants to win, and not just with the ball, not just not yeah. just the glamorous um, positions or plays. Yeah, he wants to get his head dirty in dark areas where you probably wouldn't really want to go. But that just shows you how selfless he is and how he's playing for this team and just the mentality across the board. Everyone wants to win and compete for each other, man. For sure. I think a real highlight for me was the fact Tohu probably played under 40 minutes in total, I think. And we still got the job done. Like often in the past, mm. we've been so reliant on guys like that. And then we saw Shawnee go off. You know, Egan goes into the halves. We still score yeah. points. Like the depth this year, it, it really is a strong part of our game, right? Well, Tohu Harris, I don't think he should have even played. He was crook through, through the week. I gotcha. didn't realize how bad he was. Yeah, right. Um, so when he got that rest, and, and it was interesting that he went off the field because I was like, okay, it's great to see what life's like without um, Captain Fantastic, mm-hmm. and he's been huge for the side. He really has changed the narrative of our great number 13s, you know, the the um, Kevin Campions, yep. the uh, Michael Lux, the Simon Mannerings. Mm-hmm. This is a new version of, of 13, which is something we haven't seen for a number of years, and he keeps carrying on the way he is, and wouldn't, you know, wouldn't put it past him to be the greatest 13 of all time. And that's huge yeah, in, in this club. You know, so uh, it, it's great great to see that happening. In terms of where that win ranks so far this season, obviously that first Sharks win, that stands out just because of the comeback. For me, then it's probably the Raiders win just because, you know, we went over there, spoiled the party on their milestone night and got the job done. But then on the weekend, that's got to be right up there, right? Yeah, well, I, I suppose because it's on the back of what happened last week. Mm-hmm. You know, over in Parramatta, which was potentially a banana skin game, but yeah. it was an important game. Uh, and if you think about pressure and trying to get the results with everyone being so jam packed inside that eight, mm-hmm. um, it was a huge result. 
Uh, but it was, uh, uh, once again, a very good uh, top four side. Um, you know, I think just, just had Finucane that was out. So uh, in terms of uh, being at, at full powers, um, they are pretty much close to it, you know, and, and the way they played and, and the way they threw everything at the Warriors early and that to sort of weather that storm before they came back and to win so convincingly and to score points like that, you know. Uh, this this Warrior side over the years, you're probably guilty of probably scoring in a particular way um, and and not having many uh, strengths to their bow in terms of how they can score. So yeah. this side now can score through the middle, score either edge, score from long range, and 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 that's that's deadly when you can do that, especially when you've got the defence to back it up. Because I think top four in defence, yeah. uh, Penrith are a mile ahead, but then you've got Brisbane, then you've got Melbourne and the Warriors all within – six to four points of each other. And then you've got them in the sort of top five in terms of attacking sides. And I think with the games coming up, there's real opportunities to score more points mm-hmm. and just to once again bolster that attack and just get those combinations going because it's beautiful to watch, man. Just jumping off the back of that as well, a 90% completion rate, I think. That's pretty impressive, right? Obviously, the Bunnies came here a few weeks ago and made only a handful of errors. Yeah. We then roll out that same kind of game plan. Like Heading into finals footy, is that the template of how to beat these bigger sides? Oh Well, it is against uh, the good teams because yeah. th- this is a team that I think will feature in the finals footy. Mm-hmm. And I said that early on when they, when they beat um, uh, Cronulla over there at home. Um, some wonderful players in that, Daly M as well. So um, I, I think that is the template. Obviously, if you starve the other team of position and, and for this Warriors side because they are so good, they are so fit, Fit. And um, you know, when you ask so many questions of the defensive line, they just they just can't keep up with it. Um, but on the flip side of that, this game is brutal. And yeah. if you don't have the ball and you're spending too much time defending, it takes away from your attacking powers when you have the ball in hand. But SJ once again, his kick game um, has been been on. It really has uh, served well for this side. Um, just the decisions. Yeah. Um, but now the way also Luke McCuff is playing. Um, he's been a real good for the last two weeks. Has been exceptional for Luke, and you know, Tamari was in absolute fine form um, before he got injured. Yeah, Luke struggled a little bit early on because I think he was probably trying a little bit too hard. But man, of late, we really are seeing the ability, and something you can't coach is that speed. Man, he's got buckets of it, eh? Absolutely. Yeah, I was going to jump into a couple players, and Luke was one of them. What are you liking seeing from him? Because he offers us. Something a little different to your Tamaris and co. Like you mentioned, it's that out-and-out out speed, right? He really mm. is a threat whenever he gets his hand on the ball and whenever opposition defences plant their feet, it's catch you later. Yeah, when you've got someone like Sean, who is uh, the great passing was that he is pretty much the alpha in terms of halves, it's nice having a, another runner off him. Uh, you know, but he loves playing those short sides. I don't think we play the short sides enough. And yeah. when you've got that pace and you play that pace and you've got the, the wingers like we do and back rowers, it, it really does help with scores. Um, but what I've liked about him is he had to work hard on his defence in the last sort of month. Early on, there was a couple of games there where they really spotted him up and, um, you know, he was at times found wanting. But in the last couple of weeks, he's worked off his defence. He's got that right. So he's not letting the team down. And then he's brought this this game, attacking game that we all knew he had yeah. at speed. Um, you know, because don't forget he went to America. He had to go work on his running style uh, to sort out his um, hamstring as well. But uh, a wonderful, dangerous player. And with the shape that we've got in the middle of the field, with him coming around the back um, and just having that option, even off uh, Wade Egan, it, it just – it just presents so many problems for a, a tiring defence, especially in the middle of the field. For sure. I love the old Michael J- Michael Jordan try celebration as well. And we had a few try celebrations. Someone I know you've got on your yeah. show this week, Henry Farfili. How good was it to see the lads getting around those those try July? Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome because we know the 5,000 goes to Daniel Anderson and also uh, one of the, the others who have had some hard times. Mm. Um, but, you know, just to celebrate and enjoy what you're doing out there because that's the other thing, you know, there's – a crowd here, and uh, I told some of the fans before the game, like, be aware and know that uh, when you turn up, Webby lets the boys know, and the boys know that that you are there for them. So they want to repay, they want to reciprocate, and they want to give you a display like that. So when the players can get up, they can enjoy themselves because they're enjoying their rugby league. It's nice to express yourself, man, and uh, I think Henry Fafili more than anyone got a buzz out of that, eh? 100%. Even on the, on the the social media comms here from yeah. – uh, from the Royce, he's, man, he's reposting all day, mate. So he's getting his uh, two cents uh, again under the spotlight, hence. Oh, he deserves that. One of the legends. Oh, so yeah. Shout out to him. You mentioned before Rocco Berry, and, and you said around the club there's been a lot of hype around him 
for a few years now. Unfortunately, he's had a bit of a rough time with injuries and things mm. like that, so he's come in and out of the side. But what we're seeing from him now, do you think that's kind of him showing that potential as a result of being consistently named in the team and being out on yeah, the paddock? Yeah, well, it helps, right? Time, you know, time on the field or in the saddle uh, really does help you get yeah. better at what you do. And, and you know, it's one thing being new to the game, but playing at the speed and uh, the way it's been played now in terms of uh, the competition is, is very tough. Um, he's got everything. He is purpose-built for this game. He's a, a specimen. He's a big lump of lad, uh, fast, uh, athletic, and in time he's going to fill out and he's going to be even more of a handful Part of it is believing that you can do it, uh, and the other part is uh, letting your, your your teammates in and around you understand uh, what you're capable of, and then just finding that chemistry, and and that's coming now. Uh, and I don't think we've, we've we've seen the best of him yet. I think there's more to come. I was disappointed when he got injured in the um, Dolphins game because yeah. I, I really felt that that was going to be a breakout game. But geez, he's he's playing so well now, man. Um, but you know, just. The athlete that he is, the handful, mm. uh, making better decisions on the edge too with the swing shape. Yeah, uh, you know sometimes just because it's on doesn't mean you have to you have to pass. And just that try he scored. Um, you know he's been held up a couple of times and he's been close. Uh, I think it's Parramatta. There's yeah. some wonderful saves. Yeah, and I think if that you know if he went through that again, it wouldn't have been saved. But um, you know you get that confidence from 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 games like that. And I think Rocker Berry is you know he's got a huge future in front of him. Dylan Walker, another one, and I feel like. Teams now, they're game planning for when he comes into the game. They're trying to shut him down because the momentum lift that he brings around that 20, 30 minute mark really does change the game. But week in, week out, he still does it. He has to be right up there for what? Interchange player of the year, I think the award is at the Delhi right, Hey, look, I'm, in there. I'm a Queenslander. I'm a Queenslander. But New South Wales, we're looking for a 14. That's, He's that's your guy, right? right then. Yeah. He's your guy next year, especially if he keeps playing the way he does and he didn't have his injury. Like there's, there's, you know, he's changed the game when he's come on and he did it again on the weekend. You know, just their leg speed, uh, the ability to play off the ball, he can put a shot on, um, he can hit a hole because he's still got that turn of pace and just his, his rugby league IQ, he's very, very smart. No doubt when he's out there talking to the players, uh, just chipping them up or just telling them what's on, they trust him, you know, because mm-hmm. he's played 200 uh, odd games himself. So when he says, I think this is on or be here for me on the third or fourth play uh, to run at inside shoulder, you're going to believe him. Uh, because he, he's that guy who just knows it all. Even in on the training paddock and out on the field in meetings, uh, when he talks, um, you know, it, it doesn't say a hell of a lot. But um, just the belief he has and the understanding of the game, you just you just listen. Hundred percent. Looking ahead to this week, obviously a five day turnaround. Tough on the body, but always good after a win. How crucial is it this week to bounce back against the Raiders and how hard is it to back up on short, such a short turnaround? I think when you're playing like this, it's not too hard to back up. Um, I'd rather be in the Warriors position than in the Raiders position coming off a bye. Right. It's never nice coming off a bye unless you go into a bye and uh, you need to actually rest some bodies. Mm. You need to um, have that time because you've got some injuries. Um, you know, Short week, I don't think the boys are going to get much uh, terms of preparation on the field. But when you're playing so well, when the belief is there, um, you don't need a lot. Um, And I think Webby's been very key in in terms of his messaging and what he expects from the boys and what they want. Um, So I, you know, I think they'll probably have one full full day. Um, You know, they had Monday, uh, they had Tuesday off. Yeah. Uh, Monday was there for rehab, one full day, and then they'll be back into it again. Uh, But there's no place like home Friday night. um, You know, in a very Tough ask against Canberra Raiders, who are in fine form as well. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as you saw against the Raiders uh, on that milestone match, um, you know, the, the, this Warriors side can play well when they've got the ball in hand, and that's what they need this weekend against a very good Raiders side, who without the ball, very big athletes. Uh, with the ball, very, very dangerous as big, big athletes. Yeah, you touched on it there. Obviously, the Raiders coming fourth, they're tracking pretty well. We're in fifth. It's a huge game mm-hmm. kind of for the rest of the season. But obviously they're going to try get some redemption. I think Ricky Stewart will be playing that card of, of when we went over there and spoiled their party. Yeah. What are kind of the keys to victory here? Is it a matter of just completing your sets again? Canberra have a big forward pack. They've got quite a few strike weapons yeah. as well. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Like if you starve them off position, I was 55% um, position with 90% completion. I think if you have those same sort of stats against the Canberra Raiders, uh, you're going to get the joy mm. um, more, more times than not. Um, they're a very, very big team. But... You know, being a big person is all right when you've got the ball in hand because you're dictating uh, the tempo of the game and you defensively, especially with six against, and the the shuttles, the line speed and, and the wrestle uh, are on the receiving end. Um, but flip side of that, uh, if you're defending a lot, 
and you're having to um, get up and back and, and, and defend a side that is in fine form like uh, the Warriors, uh, it makes it very difficult. And when you drain that engine, uh, you know, it makes it really hard and you're away from home, mm. you know. So um, they're in some fine form coming in, but what, like the, the Sharks were coming in, they hadn't played a side that was in the – the top echelon in terms of top four, top six, and that's what they get with the Warriors. Although they'll be in the back of their mind, um, you know, what happened um, yep. over there in, in Canberra. Recording this on a Tuesday morning, so the team's not out yet, but Marata Niokore comes back Oosh. off suspension. How excited are you to see him back out there? He's become an enforcer for us defensively, hits so hard on attack. He runs some great lines. He's just a tough body and... What, speaking to him on here last week, he can't wait to rip in. He's hated being out for three weeks watching the boys. You said it, bro. He's the modern-day enforcer, the enforcer that when he carries the ball, he carries it so strong and hard, and he puts fear into the eyes of the spot defenders or the guys that he's trying to run out. He's run some really courageous lines of, of late when he was playing, and the shots that he's been putting on is huge. Very much like Mitch Barnett um, and Adam Fonor Blacks. We don't have a, a very big pack. Yeah. Marata's probably one of our, our, our bigger boys. He's a big boy. So he, he was he, sitting on the couch. Yeah. I was like, holy smokes. So he makes a difference with that extra big body uh, yeah. when he puts the shots on or when he does an important carry. And not only that, it's the timing on when to do uh, that courageous run or run that line or, or, or to put on a shot for his side. He knows when to do it with his um, experience in, in, in playing. But, you know, when you start bringing the crew back and you start having him and then you start having Mitch, then you start having Adam and then you're having Bunty, when you're having to tackle these guys, um, you know, consecutively after each other, mm. uh, or you know, um, or running at them, that's when it starts taking its toll on you. Uh, you know, when, when when you don't have the big bodies, um, sometimes it's a little bit easier. But just just as smart, and I tell you what, I've done a few sessions with him down here. He's he's ready to go. He's fired up. Jazz yeah. is fired up. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that are waiting for their chance to come. Tamati Martin is fired up. Yeah. He's, he's got a big chest on him at the moment. He's doing a lot of big hey. pressing. Ed Corsi. Uh, there's a lot of young guys like Ali Laotoa, mm. you know, Dimitri Sifakula. Uh, they're all coming back early. They're working hard uh, for their chance to, to be a part of this because this is something that you've got to enjoy. The fans are loving it. The players are loving it. And they all want to be a part of it, man. How crucial is that? I guess you mentioned those players working hard to come back. Like that allows for zero complacency, right? Because obviously the team's tracking well. It's only human nature where you can be like, oh, we're playing some pretty good footy at the moment. But then you see these guys just itching yeah. to get your spot. That, that kind of snuffs every, any complacency out, right? Yeah, well, so, so normally if you've got a full squad to pick from, uh, that snuffs out complacency because complacency because everyone is there and yeah. you can feel the pressure of Tamari Martin Jazz um, on your feet trying to get your position. Uh, but throughout this whole year, um, you know, the poor cup team hasn't had uh, the help from the, the top 30 coming down because mm. they've – you know, at times they've they've really struggled to get people in the field or to pick from. Uh, so now that they're coming back, um, they're training so hard. Um, they're letting the players on the field know that they're there, or they're seeing uh, the, the fun that they'd be having on the field. They all want to be a part of it, mate. So they really have got a good feeling out there in terms of their environment and what they're doing to try and push each other to be the best they can, man. Um, so it's um, exciting times. It's very exciting times. Post the bye, obviously we've got the Raiders, then the bye. The run home is. Looking pretty good too. We've got the Titans away, the Tigers in Hamilton. So shout out to the Tigers for taking that game there. Manly at home, Dragons at home, Dolphins away. Obviously, you never want to get too far ahead of things, but no. like quite a few home games in there against awesome. some sides that are currently sitting lower than us on the ladder. It's easy to get tripped up in the NRL. It's such a tough competition. But as a Warriors fan, first and foremost, how exciting is that to see that the potential of finals footy and maybe even a home finals game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, it, you get very excited as a fan and as an ex-player to think that, you know, you could be out there and celebrating uh, another home semi. Um, but, you know, this team's not getting carried away. They're no. going week by week. But, like, when you mentioned the run, it's hard not to to think that um, it's exciting times, mm -hmm. you know, starting with this Friday against the Canberra Raiders. So, for a lot of the fans out there who have loved this team for a very long time and have been disappointed, um, now's your chance to get down and be a part of the feeling because it's, it's a wonderful feeling. The game day experience is huge. Yeah. Seeing the players is huge. It's something that you can't witness anywhere else. Um, I, I think the corporates are sold out th for the rest of the years. We're talking about hospitality, but just being bums on seats and supporting your team the way they go. And just remember, I said Tohi Harris and Sean Johnson 
potentially we're going to play uh, this time mm. last year. Uh, so just just celebrate that your heroes are playing well and and that they really do cherish the support that is out there. And uh, together, you know, this could be a special year, but you've got to come out, you've got to be out in force. Yeah. Um, and again, in the weekend, we're talking about people changing uh, the tone of the game. Uh, Walks did that early on, but also the crowd. The crowd mm. got behind them. They put pressure on their free. And, and when you're on song as a club, as a team playing well, your fans are there. We've always had the best supporters, but um, when the supporters are vocal, the players love it. And then it just puts a little pressure on the fans. So get out there for the Raiders this week, man. 100%. And touching on the fans, Webby mentioned it, I think, in the press conference after the game, just how special it is playing at home in front of a packed house. He knows the players, they're trying to make it that fortress that everyone's mm. dubbing it. He just gets at that guy, eh? Like, just listening to him talk, you can't help but just be fizzed up. Oh, he gets it all right, mate. You'd think he's a, a bloody Kiwi the way he carries on and yeah, how much well, he, he cares for, for this country. But it's mm. not just Webby, you know, it's Cameron George, it's yeah. Mark Robinson. Man, they really care. Mm. They really care about this club. They really care about uh, the country getting behind it and getting what they need from the great game of rugby league and in particular the one New Zealand Warriors, man. So... You know, they, they say it starts at the top, and, and I believe it does. And they, those guys aren't getting the credit that they deserve. Webby's been exceptional, man. Um, the time he has for everyone, whether I bring sponsors down, whether I bring um, fans down, he, he is there um, wholeheartedly, and that's the time he has for his, his players too. And the players just want to reciprocate, by the way, but they play on the field. So um, uh, very, very good times at the moment. Absolutely. I mentioned Dylan Walker before, interchange player of the year possibly, so let's just – put those kind of award selection hats on at the moment. Yeah. We be while we're on the topic, he's got to be right up there for coach of the year, right? Obviously if the Panthers get three in a row, you've got to look at Ivan, but they've been there, done that. We be what he's done here, massive. Oh, exceptional. I think there was a couple of posts out through the week saying that it could be the master versus the apprentice in terms of a one-off game. Yeah. We be knowing a lot about Ivan Cleary. Oh, we'll get them. Uh, and the opposition, they we'll could just get up and, and do something potentially. But like, the great thing about Webby is he doesn't want to get ahead. Yeah. And the great thing about Webby too is he never dismisses other people in and around him. Like I have conversations with him and he's talking about, you know, uh, Richard Agar brought this to me. Stacey brought this. He gives them their, 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 their time to shine. Now a normal uh, head coach has let the assistants do a lot of the stuff, but early on he's he's really putting his, his, his stamp or mark on the team and he, he's been pretty – Pretty hands on, but in terms of the coaching staff, you know, even Slade Griffin, they've been doing a wonderful job. What he's been doing with the cup side, um, so there's some very good people there, man. Um, you know, working with Webby and helping Webby, but Webby's been exceptional. Um, you know, for such an inexperienced coach and what he's been able to do, his delivery, his messaging, his smarts, yep. um, the way he challenges his players. Uh, and just the time he has, because uh, he is really engaged. Like when he actually talks to the players, he's engaged. Yeah. And you see it, you believe it, um, and whether it be the fans, the sponsors, everything else. So, you know, we've got a good one there. Yeah, we do. Uh, we we need to make sure we lock them up for a number of years. Hundred percent. Yeah, make that happen for sure. Another one who, in my opinion, is right in line for the Dally M, Sean Johnson, the Prince of Penrose. He's got to be right in the mix. When votes went behind closed doors, round twelve, I think mm. he was sitting in tenth behind guys like Payne Haas, Nathan Cleary, Reese Walsh. A lot of them are missed times with injury or mm. suspension. In your opinion, is SJ a genuine chance at winning our second ever Dally M at the Warriors? Why do you think so? I, th- I think, you know, if he was 10th then, I think it would be up in the top, top, you know, three to five. Absolutely. Uh, no yeah. doubt about it. And if he keeps playing the way he's playing um, and cons- uh, consistently uh, and plays the remainder of the games, why not? Because mm. um, the way he's been playing, you know, it's been – Lauded this side of the Tasman and the other side uh, he's, he's been exceptional, you know, and it's great to see. I mean, because at the moment he's playing with a smile and he's playing with a smile. He's absolutely dangerous. This is the best SJ I've seen ever, even even 2011. He's just complete um, everything he's doing for the side. It's just all about the side. Yeah. It's all about the club. Uh, and that's why he's smiling and everyone else is smiling as well. While we're looking to the future, let's touch on next year as well, just quickly, because obviously we're guys like Wade, Ali, SJ, all sign extensions, Roger, CHT, all coming back. It's just awesome to be around the club at the moment, isn't it? And things only look to be getting brighter even next year. Oh, very excited. Because what you, what I like about all those guys coming in, they're all competitors, absolute competitors mm. and ultimate professionals. And and with a lot of X Factor, you talk about Roger, I mean, that's X Factor galore. Mm. Um, we, we're seeing the shape now. And we're seeing what they are going to the line. Imagine if Rogers uh, wow. on that edge, or he's, he's coming out the back of that shape, or yeah. he's he's coming off it. 
uh, you know, all you need is a one on one. And I think if we look back in the days where Daniel Anderson was the coach and we had some freaks of playing a bit like Ali Del Tiri, Fika Palisina, Sione Famuina, uh, Francis Melli, that was always the call. All they need is a one on one. Yeah. Just isolate defenders, give them the one on one. And they'll have the ability to do whatever they want, do an inside shoulder. And that's what the side is doing now. And what's so good is the belief is there. And and they can score anywhere across the park from short distance, from long range. And the fact that they enjoy doing it through the middle of the park as well, which, which is real threat as well. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. Exciting times for sure. I could sit here and talk to you all day about it, but we do have some fan questions, so oh, yes. we'll rip into those before we wrap it up. The first one comes through from Shane, and he says, Egan, he's always been classy, but do you see Wade doing anything different this year compared to past years? I think the past two years, um, you know, he's been great, uh, but this year in particular, um, you know, when he, when he first came on, I think he, he got a little bit of stick because he, he, people thought he probably didn't do enough comparing him to the absolute best hookers in the game. But right now he's up there with the best hookers in the game. Um, his engine is just phenomenal. Um, his ball playing or his passing is huge. But but in time as well, because obviously there's a shape uh, yeah. that requires him to bring the boys onto the ball. But we saw last week when he got out of dummy half, he picks his times right. He's scored some tries. He's he's developing very, very well. And, you know, he's still very, very young. Yeah. Right? You know, like if he hangs around for a long period of time, you know, you'll be you, – he'll be up there with, with the goats of the club in terms yeah. of nine. You know, like he's obviously played longer than the likes of PJ Marsh and that, but he's having the ability like a, a PJ Marsh. But more importantly for him, it's the presence he has off the field on the training pitch, talking to players, very uh, calm and softly spoken. But, um, geez, he's, he's a force out there on the field, mate. Wonderful player. Hundred percent. The next one comes through from Wahoo Devante, and he says, "One team that you don't want to play come finals time. Is there anyone that you'd be worried about? We mentioned before that one-off game, Master versus Apprentice, as the potential. Yeah. But is there anyone else out there you're liking the look of at the moment? I think if there's one team, and I don't like normally talking about stats or nemesis yeah. because this is a different team. Yeah, uh, you can't compare them to any team 100%. going through. Um, I, I, I just feel that it's the Melbourne Storm." if I had to choose, was the mm. team that we may find it more difficult to play against. I don't know if that's because of some of the damage that's happened in, in previous years. But I I, th- I think they will be up for the Penrith Panthers. I know they'll be up for Melbourne Storm because they've been close with every team. So to be honest, if I had to choose, I'd probably say Melbourne. But I, I don't feel that this team is is going to be worried about everyone else because if they get their their stuff right and if they took their, their boxes – Dot the I's, cross the T's. I really feel this side can beat any side in, in, in the competition. But they've got to do that if they make the final series back to back to back to back. And yeah. if there's one thing that's lacked this year is consistency. So they, they they need to do that, and they're addressing that as well. How good would a SJ finals footy, dummy of doom, the repeat against the storm again, <laughs> a try in the corner. That would be rugby league poetry oh, for sure. Next up, Rocky says, is there anyone unknown behind the scenes that needs credit for the Warriors' success too? And you mentioned a couple names there in the coaching staff. You mentioned Cam George, mm. Robbo. Anyone else that you kind of think needs a shout out? Because it really is a collective effort, isn't it? Look, there's a lot of things happening. Um, like Webby is the tip of the spear, no doubt about it. Uh, but you know, there's Kai Kata France and John Vaki mm-hmm. in the conditioning. There's Balin Couples, who is the the fitness. There's a lot of guys in there and around rehab and 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 um, physio in terms of Jed and 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 what they're doing. So. Uh, you know, I haven't seen previous years, but being involved this year and looking from afar, everyone is on mm-hmm. and, and everyone is playing their part, uh, whether it be rehab, whether it be Jerry Seal Seal talking to the players, making sure uh, they're in good conditions. Um, some of the ambassadors coming down um, in the air, some of the old boys coming back. Um, but that's all, once again, led from the top, uh, and that's what Webby wanted early on. He wanted the old boys coming in. He wanted... Um, the wrestling, getting comfortable, being uncomfortable, and, and also, um, once again, Cameron George and Mark Robinson. So I've got to say, as a collective, there is a lot of people doing wonderful things. Um, you know, if, if, even the corporates, uh, I mean, that's in the in the front office. I mean, yeah. that's sold out for the for the remainder of the year. You can't Crazy. get a, a ticket on the table. You can't get a ticket in the box. You can't yeah. do anything. And that's a result of uh, the fans and the support out there because, you know, don't underestimate the part that you guys play. You play a huge part uh, in lifting this team 100%. and making them want to play for them. And so everything is just is just going well so so far. 
Gotta love it. The next one from 685, and he says, is there any chance moving the Warriors game to Eden Park if we make the finals? And I get what he's meaning with the in terms of the more tickets, a bigger crowd, yeah. but I think the right option, right, is keep it at Mount Smart, keep those temporary stands up, and let's get 30,000 here. Yeah, look, there's no place like home, man. Mm. Um, the, the boys absolutely love it. The fans love it. And when you're out on the field so close on top of them, it, it makes a huge difference, you know, and and – the way they've been playing, and uh, I know where they would prefer to play, it, yeah. it would be absolutely yeah. here, you know. And you know, there's been a huge hardcore select uh, audience that's been coming each year, so I'm sure they'll they'll get their seats, they'll be in, yeah. and, and and they're the main ones that count. But all the support would be be loved indeed, hundred percent. And then the last one comes through from Hayden says, "What was your favourite moment as a warrior?" Quite a general question, but do you have like a standout moment? Obviously, like debuts and that are always special, but mm. you're a part of some real special games and occasions. Yeah. Um, uh, look, it's hard to single out. Debut was was awesome. Running out as captain uh, for the first time on this ground was was amazing. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, the blackout in the final series, uh, SFS Stadium, uh, Allianz now, um, when – against Canberra it was one of the, the toughest games even Ruben Wiki talks about this back now mm. in 2003 and that was the start of, of of that run I think that was after the um the Bulldogs game uh, that was a, a very tough game against some good boys and just it's just the crowd uh, and, and just the feeling amongst the boys so many um good times in the Warriors colours man and and to be an old boy and to come back and and to see what's happening now it just you know brings back some of those memories but it, it just makes you proud of of the new brigade and what they're doing and uh, the legacy that they'll be leaving behind Absolutely. And just on those, that old boys there, I've noticed a, a lot of former players around the club at the moment. We obviously see them up in the lounges and things like that. Is it cool to just see familiar faces around, catching up with old teammates and just chewing the fat, enjoying yeah. the success that the club is having? It's good. It's good when they come back and some of them come out of the woodwork and then, you know, but it's really good. And Webby's been very good. And if they're there for captain's run, they come and sit in with the team. It's uh, awesome. Amongst yeah. the boys when the, the game plans get delivered. And, you know, if you understand what it is to, have the true Warriors identity if you understand the history if you understand what uh, you know Robbo and Cameron are trying to achieve uh, if you understand that winning is the most important thing here and those who have gone before you um, and what you want to achieve for the fans and everything else um, you start understanding what it means or what is needed of you uh, to be absolute best to, to, to get that result so um, it's all happening around at the moment so um, you know you just got to buckle up get in and enjoy the best you can. And it starts by getting down to uh, the stadium this weekend against Canberra Raiders. Let's go. 100% Friday night. It's going to be huge, no doubt, another big crowd. But appreciate your time, mate. Always love talking footy with you. So cheers for jumping on. And again, shout out to the TAB, the sponsor of this podcast. If you are having a punt on your NRL or the Warriors, please do so responsibly, but make sure you do it through our friends at the TAB. Cheers for your time there, Mons. Chop any. Legend.